Well, let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to BayWorks Virtual Training Buffet 2021. Um, this session is entitled Everything You Need to Know About new, the New DDW OpCert Testing. And um, we're glad that you're with us today. My name is Robert Scott, and I'll be your moderator. Um, if For those of you who may not be familiar with BayWork, uh, we are a consortium of water and wastewater agencies in the San Francisco Bay region and beyond. And we're working together to ensure that we will have a reliable workforce needed to serve our customers and protect the environment. BayWork activities, programs, and events are open to employees of all water and wastewater utilities. Please visit our website, it's website at baywork.org. Before we begin the session, I want to review a couple housekeeping items. We want to invite you to post your questions and comments into the chat field, and we will be getting um, as many as of those answered as we can near the end of the session. Um, this session will be posted on the website soon. And also near the end of the session, we will have a um, brief survey that we would like for you to complete because we want to know your thoughts and know how that we can make things better in the future. You will receive this survey by email as well as um, being able to access it in the chat. Um, we want to invite you to um, turn your, your screen from, from the gallery view to the speaker view, so that way you can make sure you can speaker for today. And with that, I want to introduce to you our speaker, Sue Murphy. She's a water quality specialist at Solano Irrigation District. So I want to turn it over to Sue. Sue, take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Robert. I'm really happy to be here today and share some of the information I've learned about the changes to the State Water Resources Control Board's Division of Drinking Water Operator Certification Program. It has truly never been easier to get certified, and I hope people go out this afternoon and start the process. This is the website uh, for the Drinking Water um, State Board, and everything that I'm going to show you today came from their materials. I want to be sure that I give everybody accurate uh, information. There are 35,000 water treatment and distribution operators throughout the state of California. So that just gives you an idea of how big the state is. Today's the 16th uh, on the left there, tomorrow's the 17th and the quarterly advisory committee meeting uh, will be meeting from one to three, the agendas there and the minutes from the last meeting. If you really like to know the details, that is an excellent opportunity. On the left, we have a new job analysis survey. And if you complete that, the operator certification department will give you four contact hours. When was the last time they gave us contact hours? The thing that was surprising to me about it was it's a very long survey. So we're gonna go over the computer-based testing process overview and the frequently asked questions. Uh, a lot of our staff don't spend much time on the internet. And so I try to have the same forms available in the office, hard copy. So we're gonna start with the computer-based testing overview, the examination process, scheduling the exam, the test day check-in, taking the exam and getting the results, costs and some frequently asked questions. And I don't know what's not to like about the changes. I think they're long overdue and great. So just to start with a little background for anyone that might not be familiar with the old way of doing things, uh, the State Water Board offered uh, paper and pencil exams twice a year for distribution and twice a year for treatment. They alternated every three months, there was treatment, then distribution, then treatment, then distribution. So you could only take it twice a year and you had to wait six months. Uh, they were held on Saturdays, one in the spring and one in the fall at 10 locations throughout the state. Uh, sometimes they were cafeterias at colleges or big ballrooms at hotels. I can remember waiting in line uh, many times at these locations. 
with 100 people taking the exam at the same time. But due to COVID-19, uh, they've been moving to a year-round computer-based testing at more than 30 testing centers statewide. So it's really about time. Other states have done this, and um, California took a lot of thought because of the sheer size of uh, the program here. But the benefits for the test takers for computer-based testing are no more application deadlines. I don't know how many times somebody came and said, oh, I want to take that distribution test. Oh, too bad. The deadline was yesterday. Now you have to wait six months. So you can go and fill out the application for treatment and distribution this afternoon. You can test year round instead of just the two Saturdays or four Saturdays total. Uh, and there are a lot more testing locations. So you might not have to drive down from Tahoe or long distances that some people used to have to do. And one of the best things is the exam results are known much faster. So to apply to take an exam for distribution or treatment, and I'm going to mention a little bit about wastewater certification as well, because I have some wastewater friends. Um, you just go to their website and fill out the application. They can be submitted at any time. And the only difference between the drinking water program and the wastewater program is there's a 60 day filing period for the wastewater exams. So the earliest an applicant could take a wastewater exam would be 60 days from the date uh, the state received the application. Applicants that are approved uh, will receive notification from the state water board by email within 30 days. Uh, originally that hadn't been happening, but it's my understanding now that they've really gotten caught up with the backlog and some of the people that have been waiting to submit their applications have now heard that uh, they can go to the next step. So usually they would cash your check right away. There was no problem with that part of the process. And then you'll receive notification if you meet the guidelines to take the exam that you applied to take. And if they don't have an email address, then they're going to go back to notifying people by uh, the US mail. So it's really best to give them an email address. So after you receive approval from the state water board, hopefully by email, then you'll go to prometric.com, the provider that the state is contracted with to oversee the testing process to schedule an exam appointment. The applicants will be provided a 90 day window uh, to schedule and take their exam. So once you're approved, you can't wait a super long time to schedule and take your exam. You have a 90 day window to schedule and take the exam. On test day check-in, uh, you must arrive to the selected testing center 30 minutes before the scheduled test time. I'm an early bird. I would never cut it that close. There might be traffic. You know, I always drive by and make sure I'm familiar where it is, if there are any parking issues. Um, but the reason they ask for that is that there's a security check-in process and test takers will need to show a valid government issued photo ID. And I'll be showing in a short film later what that process is like. So taking the exam, the exam content hasn't changed, but instead of a paper exam booklet and a Scantron, I couldn't believe they were still using Scantrons. Uh, I, <laughs> I was really shocked the first time I saw that. And pencil, uh, the test takers will use a computer to see the questions and select the answers. And they have a demonstration of the exam experience on their website. Some people thought that because it was computer based, that that meant that you could take it on your computer at home. Nope, that's not what it means. You're still going to have to go to a monitored uh, test center to take it. Getting the results, here's another piece of happy news. The exam results are emailed to the test taker within one business day after the exam is completed. And somebody asked me, if you're taking the exam, 
and you've answered enough questions wrong to know that you know you're not going to pass can they just let you know so you can leave and not stay any longer uh, the exam is 100 questions and you're allowed three hours to take it and I asked the operator certification department and you can leave when you want and you can stay, but they're not going to tell you until you check out whether you have passed the exam or not. And the results are also going to be sent to the office of operator certification. So here's some frequently asked questions um, that are on the Division of Drinking Water's website. Who is providing the computer-based testing? Uh, the board uh, looked at several different types of companies that are in this type of business, and they determined that Prometric had a good history of implementing other exams. I've known people that have taken engineering exams, certification exams, nursing exams through Prometric. And so that way the state could contract with one entity. And the drinking water treatment, T1 through T4, uh, the T5s will still be uh, an oral exam. And the meeting tomorrow is going to talk a little bit about you know, how that's going to work. Um, the drinking water distribution from D1 to D5 will be through Prometric and the wastewater treatment one through five will also be there. If you already applied in 2020, uh, will you have to reapply? No, if you've already applied for the exam in the spring or fall and you didn't take an emergency exam, you don't need to reapply. If you're already approved for an exam, they will be sending you details on how to schedule. And I know some people that are scheduling because they were not able to take the exam in 2020. If you're unsure of your status, if you haven't heard anything, uh, the two different departments for wastewater and drinking water, contact them and ask them where things at with your application. Several exams were canceled in 2020. Are those people eligible for computer-based testing? Yes, uh, if they were approved for the spring or fall, 2020 exams, they are approved for computer-based testing. And again, they'll be sending you details on how to schedule your exam. What are the application deadlines? Remember, we said there are no deadlines to apply for the exams. You can submit an exam application at any time. So I've never seen anybody submit a distribution and treatment exam at the same time, but you certainly can now. And there's just the 60 day filing period for the wastewater exams. When will the exams be held? They're gonna be held year round at the Prometric Computer Testing Centers throughout the state. And they usually have appointments Monday through Friday from eight to five. And it says that some testing centers may have availability after 5 p.m. or on Saturdays, but I reviewed a lot of them and I didn't come across any that had that. But you would probably have to go to a specific test center if you needed to do it during a different time period. Uh, how do I schedule an exam date and time? After you submit your application, it's reviewed, you've been approved. They're going to send you an email that you're approved to schedule your exam and the instructions on how to do it. And once you have that code from them, you'll be able to schedule and take your exam using the Prometric website. How will my testing date and time be determined? You will schedule it anytime during that 90 day period. So that's really nice to be able to schedule it on maybe one of your regular days off or you know, a time that works for you first thing in the morning. Uh, it's not gonna be as crowded as it was because there'll be a lot more days that people can take exams at a lot more places. And again, a uh, frequently asked question about bringing a calculator, scratch paper, you won't have to do that. Uh, there are math problems like there always were and the test center has some pencil, I think it was a pen uh, they talked about, and scratch paper, or some of them have a dry erase board that you can use to make your notes. 
uh, what version of the equivalence of formula sheets will be provided. If you've taken exams before, you know how much you love the formula sheets. Well, they'll still be the same ones and you'll still have access to them. And there are the websites that you can go to on the certification website to download uh, those um, formula sheets. And I always keep a couple laminated on my desk and fold it up in my purse. And I love these formula sheets. Uh, you don't know how often they come in handy. And the best thing to do is when you're studying to use the formula sheets, because then when you take the exam, you'll be more familiar with them. You don't need everything on the formula sheets because those formula sheets are for everybody, for all the levels and treatment and distribution. So it can be a little overwhelming, but you will have formula sheets. How soon will you receive your results? Drinking water exam results will be available immediately after completing the exam. So that is so nice to be able to know when you walk out that you pass that exam. I don't know how many times myself and others have waited a month for that letter to finally come to tell you whether you passed or not. And I lucked out. I always passed all the exams I took, but apparently there's a different colored paper if you're not so lucky. So if you do fail your exam, how soon can you reapply? Well, you can reapply immediately after receiving your results. And again, the 60-day filing period for wastewater treatment exams. Um, hey, so that's, yeah. Excuse me, Sue. Oh. There's a question here that maybe this maybe this is a good time to ask it. Um, it's sure. To the uh, the the conversion tables, um, you said it a little bit, but maybe we can be a little more specific. Are the conversion tables still provided in hard copy for distribution operator testing? You know, that's a really good question, and it's from everything that I've seen, and I haven't taken any of the exams yet myself they are electronic in the back of the electronic exam booklet. So you might have to say, write down the equation if you're the type of person that likes to write something down on the scratch paper uh, or uh, a conversion factor, but you have access to them. Okay. They don't, want any opportunity for anybody to write anything on any piece of paper. And you'll see when we get to the security measures that I think for like menus touching things, they, you know, just want everything to be electronic. Okay, thank you. And there may be some people in the audience who have taken these exams already. Unfortunately, I'm done with all my testing. Yay. <laughs> Uh, but I wish I could have still had some more to do with this new procedure because it's great. So if you don't pass your exam, you can apply to take it again right away. And apparently there's a process to change your exam appointment. So if something comes up or what happens frequently to the people I know, they never studied and then the date to take the exams there and they're like, well, I got to postpone this. I'm not ready. Uh, does the computer-based testing increase your exam fee? Hey, they don't anticipate raising the exam fees in 2021, but to receive updates on future exam fee increases, you should subscribe to the certification email list. Even if you're not certified, you should subscribe to the certification email list uh, for a lot of reasons so that you can just keep up to date on what the changes are and there are some people that think that this might help keep the exam costs down because they don't have to rent as many facilities and they don't have to have as many proctors and produce all those paper uh, tests. So uh, I'm interested to see on the long term what happens with the fees. What security measures are used to the computer-based testing sites? They have a wide range of security measures in addition to providing a, a valid government issued ID, applicants must have their picture taken at check-in. That didn't used to happen. 
testing center staff closely inspect eyeglasses, jewelry, and other accessories for camera devices. Uh, so I guess I won't be taking my eye watch into the test. Uh, they're monitored by in-person and remote proctors via video recording. So there's quite a bit of attention to security at their test centers. I think that's because they've learned over the years that they have to be careful uh, about what creative people can come up with. And they want to assure people that every COVID-19 safety measure that they can do is in place at the testing centers. Uh, applicants displaying symptoms will not be admitted. Staff and test takers are required to wear masks. Gloves and sanitizer are available for the test takers. And during check-in in the entire exam process, social distancing is required. All surfaces, including workstation pens, lockers, locker keys, are cleaned and sanitized between each user. And they have detailed information on their website about their cleaning procedures. Protecting honest test takers and ensuring fair test experiences. I thought this worthy of a slide of its own. They're really serious about cheating and they really inspect the eyeglasses. I was surprised you'll see in the video jewelry and other accessories. Camera devices are getting so small these days and they wanna make sure that people aren't capturing the exam content. So you'll be required to remove your eyeglasses for close visual inspection. Jewelry outside of wedding and engagement rings is prohibited. Please don't wear other jewelry to the test center. Hair accessories and ties are subject to inspection. Don't use ornate clips and combs and barrettes and headbands and tie clips and cufflinks with little things written on them. Uh, you won't be allowed to take them into the testing room when you're given a locker, which you'll see in the video, to store those types of things. And any violation of their security protocol will result in confiscation of prohibited devices and termination of your exam. They take treating, uh, cheating very seriously. The state does as well. Uh, at Prometric, their priority is to ensure that all test takers who visit their centers have a safe, and the definition of safe is up there, secure. And I laugh when I saw the stress-free experience. If you're taking your D5 exam, I don't know how stress-free the experience can be. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, they've worked with third-party experts like John Hopkins to enhance their procedures to minimize transmission and protect the test takers and staff. The following is a video from Prometrics website that will provide you with a detailed overview of what to expect during your visit to their test center so that you will feel more prepared and more confident in your testing. And they wish you the very be best of luck on test day. And it really made me feel good to actually see the center. So this will just take a moment. At Prometric, it's our goal to ensure that your safety and well-being is a top priority anytime you visit one of our test centers. The more you know about what to expect, the more comfortable you'll feel and the better you'll perform. Prior to testing, it's important to review the email sent by your test sponsor to make sure you are prepared with what you'll need for testing, such as valid identification and your confirmation number. You may also receive a courtesy call indicating what time to arrive. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we've partnered with Johns Hopkins and implemented new safety protocols to keep our candidates safe so the testing experience may look a little different than it has in the past. Please make yourself aware of these safety and social distancing policies before you arrive. Remember that a mask is required at all times in the test center in order to take your exam. It's important to arrive 30 minutes before your scheduled exam so that you have ample time for check-in. When you walk into the test center, you will be greeted by a friendly Prometric Test Center Administrator. The Test Center Administrator will ask for your name and check your valid government-issued identification to confirm your identity. You will be required to pull down your mask for image verification purposes. 
Next, you'll be assigned a locker and provided with a locker key. The test center administrator will also make you aware of the test center rules and regulations. All of your personal belongings, including all jewelry, cell phones, keys, jackets, hats, and other items, must be placed in your temporary locker during your time in the test center. You may be asked to sit in the waiting area until it is time to proceed with further check-in procedures. When in the waiting area and at your locker, please comply with social distancing policies and maintain six feet from other staff and candidates. As a further health measure, we've incorporated hand sanitizing stations in our test centers. We encourage you to utilize them frequently. Once your name is called and before you enter the testing center, the test center administrator will guide you through some standard security procedures. If your testing center has a metal detector, you will be asked to walk through it. The test center administrator will perform a visual inspection of your person. You will be required to take off your glasses to check for camera devices, pull up your sleeves or show your forearms for full visibility of your wrists, turn your pockets completely inside out, and raise your pant legs for full visibility of your ankles. This visual inspection ensures that no prohibited items enters the testing center. Depending on the exam you're taking, there may be additional security procedures required, such as a test date photo. You may also be provided with any materials required for your test, such as scratch paper and a pen. All Prometric test center materials are thoroughly cleaned and disinfected between candidate visits for your safety. Once in the testing room, please be mindful of other candidates who are testing and follow the given instructions. Masks must be worn properly, covering both nose and mouth throughout your visit to Prometric's test center. If you have any questions, need to take a break, or need to check out, please raise your hand and a test center administrator will come to assist you. Upon successful completion of your exam, please return to the test center administrator's desk. Here you will sign out, put all of your materials in the assigned bins, and exit to the reception area where you will collect your belongings before exiting the Prometric Testing Center. At Prometric, we've taken every precaution to make your visit to our center a safe and successful experience. We appreciate your support and compliance with our established safety procedures to ensure the health and well-being of everyone at the center. We look forward to seeing you on test day. So I think that was probably pretty helpful. It was to me in kind of getting a sense of what their test centers are like. So I thought we, oh, did you have a question, Robert? Yeah, so there's a question here. The video probably answered it, but I'd like to hear your commentary on this. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, um, Jonathan asks, will there be dividers between test takers? Well, that room that they showed had you know, some division. I don't know if all of their test centers are similarly made, but they seem to be pretty careful about, you know, every other station and alternating people. Okay, great. I'd be interested when we get to the end, if anybody has actually gone through this, uh, it'd be nice to hear from them. So get prepared. Uh, um, attendees out there, those that have taken the test to share your experience with us. We'll get to that later. Yeah, that'll be great. I'll try to leave some time. I try to talk as fast as I can because I always want to cover more material than I should. Uh, right. So I just wanted to talk for a minute about the fees. Uh, if you're not sure of the requirements for each particular grade, you have to refer to the regulations. Uh, for instance, to take the D1 and T1, you don't need to have any special certificate, but to take the D2 and T2, you have to have completed a home study course or a, a community college course and have the certificate to apply. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But the examination fee for grade one is 50 and then it goes up from there to grade five for 155, and that's the same for distribution or treatment 
and you can see you get like a little off uh, if you have to take the exam again. We had one of our staff that really benefited from that discounted re-exam fee. And then once you pass the exam, then the second step is getting the cert certificate. So you don't just automatically get the certificate when you pass the exam. Once you receive notice that you pass the exam, then you apply for the certification. For grades one and two, you simply fill out the bottom portion of the notice and return it with the fee and they'll issue the certificate but you're not considered a certified operator until you apply and submit payment for the certificate. For grades three to five, a second application must be submitted along with the certification fee and the required documentation verifying experience requirements have been fulfilled. And um, I've gone through that myself and it, generally requires a, a letter on agency letterhead, uh, org chart, a job description. They're pretty serious about uh, making sure you have the right experience requirements for the different types of treatment and distribution grades in the three, four, and five. And then don't forget, you have to give them the money, $140 for a D5. But if you're dual certified, which I am, I only have to pay $105 for the certification fee for each of the licenses. So there's another argument for having both distribution and treatment certifications. You can get a discount uh, on them. And the water treatment and distribution certificates must be renewed every three years. That's the same as the old problem. And obtaining continuing education contact hours is a requirement for renewal. The number of hours depends on the level of certification and these contact hours must be obtained between your renewal due dates. Um, the licenses are renewed every three years, so you have three years, but you don't wanna wait until the very last day to get the experience that you need. And this slide doesn't mention it, but 25% of those contact hours can be safety related courses. And I just wanna say a word about continuing education units and contact hours. A lot of people use those interchangeably. Uh, they aren't. Uh, continuing education units are issued by say a junior college or college or the Ken Carey Office of Water Program Sac State Home Study courses. And contact hours are what you would get for uh, participating in the training at Baywork today. So one CEU is worth uh, 10 contact hours. So if you were to do a, a home study course for nine CEUs, that is equivalent to 90 contact hours. So if you're strategic about when you take those home study courses, you can use them both to sit for exams and to satisfy your renewal contact hour requirements. And I've said this a bunch of times, but I don't think it's always appreciated. Those contact hours, if you obtain them during the overlapping period of both your distribution and treatment licenses, you can use the same contact hours for both licenses. So that's a strategy. And now that you're gonna take your distribution exam in the morning and your treatment exam in the afternoon, for the first time ever, you could have the same three year cycle for renewal. So it helps to make it as easy as possible. And I've always had an operator help area in my office and I have copies of the home study courses. I have catalogs from uh, CSUS. I have printed out the applications and what's required to both sit for the exam and to get the certificate. I even addressed the envelopes and did everything I could to make it easier for the staff who aren't as savvy with computers. And in the background there, I have lots of copies of this uh, formula sheet. And I also put out one of my favorite exam prep books. It has treatment and distribution questions in the same book for every level divided by level. 
And I had uh, my uh, water distribution uh, operation and maintenance book signed by Ramsey Mahmood, the director at the Office of Water Programs. And I can't give a presentation on certification without including my favorite pictures of Ken Terry, who started the program. We're getting close to the end of uh, my presentation. And one of the things that I've done, and I think you can do, and other people at other agencies have done, is to help other people get certified. Uh, I would stay after work on Wednesdays and help anybody that you know wanted to get through one of the home study books or was just wanting a little practice for the exams. I have different copies of 100 question exams with about, say, 10 math problems and uh, just try to help people not make some of the common errors. Uh, one of the ones I see all the time is no units. <laughs> I, I would never write a number without a unit uh, unless it was a number that didn't have a unit like pH. Uh, writing very sloppy, uh, that causes a lot of trouble when you go back to try to read it and not starting to study with enough time before the exams, that cramming at the last weekend, it might work for some people, but uh, it's not the best policy. And I find it funny in a lot of the people that I've worked directly with, they can tell me to the penny how much overtime they should be paid. But the second you introduce a metric unit, then they don't know what to do. And fractions are another area that many people have difficulty with, the idea of just moving a decimal point. And so anybody can learn this math. Uh, and I think the best thing to recommend is start where you're at and move forward. You know, Just keep doing the same types of problems so until you can understand them. Because there's only so many problems they can ask you on any of these exams. The volume, how much water is in the tank, how much water is in the pipe, chlorination, dosage, how much chlorine, and pressure. And the difference between the higher grades is you might have to do some unit conversion uh, to get the answers. Let's see, how are we doing on time, Robert? We're doing quite well, Sue. So. Okay, I wanted to be sure I left enough time at the end. Let's see, that's the end. So uh, we could go back over anything or uh, I'd be very interested if anybody has any feedback of what their certification experience has been. Well, we'll get to that, Sue, we'll, um, and I want the, the attendees to get prepared to share your, your responses. But also I wanna ask the attendees, if you can, um, type into the chat with the agency that or organization that you work for and perhaps where your licensing is now, if you choose to. Um, if you can put that in the chat, we appreciate it. There are a couple of questions here, Sue. Um, um, where can I find more trainings that offer contact hours for renewal besides Bay work? Well, that's my favorite topic in the world. I am always looking for high quality free training especially you know for people that are just getting started in the industry and the majority of the training that i go to is high quality no cost training uh, there are several nonprofit organizations that do free training rcac does a lot of training uh, the epa does training they have once a month uh, workshops, uh, Rural Water, <clears throat> the national organization has free videos. Uh, if you get an hour here, an hour there, it really adds up. Uh, I have a quarterly water quality meeting that happens to be Thursday and there are two contact hours for attending that. So I think I've seen on your website, I mean, you guys do an awesome job uh, other links to training. And sometimes I know I myself have 
forwarded something I think that would be of use or interesting. And with remote training now, it, the door is even more open than it's ever been. I mean, you could go to their website and fill out that questionnaire and get four contact hours free from, from the certification department. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, you mentioned some, um, uh, some materials uh, and we're wondering if that some of those materials can be posted on our website as we uh, as we put this presentation up that you've given. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Uh, I find the thing that I get asked for the most <clears throat> is an example of the exam, like say a D2 exam, the 100 questions, uh, how many are math, the four answers are there for each question. So if you can rule out a couple, you know, you increase your, your odds. And I kind of describe it to people like when you take your driver's license ex exam, you just want to see some examples of the driving test. You don't want to actually read the booklet. You just want to see some examples of the questions and what the possible answers are. Uh, and then you'll have a better idea when you take the test. A lot of times what I've done in the past is I'll highlight the right answer. There are certain topics that I really like, but thrust blocks and uh, meters are not my favorite. So I always have more difficulty with the field questions. But the more examples that you see, uh, I think a, a 100 question distribution test and a 100 question treatment test would be a good place to start. And I'd be glad to provide an example of both of those for you. That's great, Sue. Um, you said this in your presentation, but I wanna make it clear because you mentioned how for the first time you are able to have your, say your treatment license and your distribution license start date overlapped completely. It's like you can take one test in the morning, take the next test in the afternoon, and then pass both of them on the same day. And this is the first time that that's been possible. So say if I were to do that now, and you mentioned this, does that mean now that all of my accumulated contact hours, I could use, I could double use them for both licenses because they completely overlap? Yes. Yes, and, and actually clear. in the past, what I used to do is I would draw out my distribution timeline when I got it, when it expired, and then over it, I would draw out my treatment timeline, and then I would shade those areas that overlapped, and that's when I would concentrate on getting my contact hours so that I could use them for both. Ah, that's good. That's a great idea. Great idea. I'd be glad to show an example of that. Okay. Because still, I think not too many people are going to take three hours of a distribution test in the morning and three hours of treatment in the afternoon, but you'd be surprised. I hear so many people that are eager, eager to get certified, at least to the D2 and T2 level. The job opportunities have never been greater. Yeah. We just hired five operators, three treatment and three distribution. I had somebody ask me the other day, please, do you know a D1 with no experience? A D1, we'll take them. No, you know, the supply <laughs> and demand is just not there with the retirements and the changes in the industry. It's just an amazing time to get into it. And it's a great transition career for people from other backgrounds. That's, that's great, Sue. Um, if you don't mind, um, can you stop your share? Because I want to give the attendees a chance to verbally um, tell us their treat their testing experience if they've done the uh, the, the prometric way okay um, and so you 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 are now able to unmute your mic and if you've taken the test through prometric or you know during this time of covid um, just share a little bit about your experience or your perspective we'd like to hear it come on alejandro you look like you've taken an exam <laughs> no. Surely there's somebody here who's taken an exam, even if it was an emergency exam uh, at the health department. 
There any... really haven't been any exams being taken in the last two years. No one, I see. Wow. Are you excited right. about this? This is Catherine way? Curtis. Oh, I haven't ahead. taken any exams because I'm workforce. So I'm here to learn about the exams so I can pass the information on. Excellent. Good, you know, good presentation, Sue. Oh, thank you so much. I, I feel like I'm talking to myself. It's nice to see two people now. I'm so used to being able to see who I'm interacting with. Um, the uh, 100 question exam, I love tests. My, my goal every test when I walked in was, ooh, maybe I could get a perfect paper this time. But that never happened because of those fire hydrant and thrust block questions. Um, but not everybody likes taking tests. They get nervous. But if you can do that 100 question practice test, it's pass fail. I forgot to mention their pass fail. So you can miss a few math questions and a few of the narrative types of questions and still be on that side of that 70% to get your certificate. That's great. It's, it's usually the math that holds people up. I don't know why people don't like metric as much as I do. I have a nice metric lunchbox. I think if more people had a metric lunchbox, it's actually easier to do changes between units in a metric system. Yeah. Oh, so I want to. I just want to reiterate something you said, and I and I. I don't know if it applies to anyone that's here today, but I think it's an excellent strategy to um, put together that your calendar and show where your T license, if you got both T and your D, where they overlap, where is the overlapping period for them? And if you can concentrate getting your contact hours there, then you get you get two, two for one. I think you can't beat that. And I can't tell you how, how many of our staff use that 25% safety. You're already getting safety training through you know respirator training and confined space you know, save those certificates. When vendors come and talk to us, I always make them give us a contact hour certificate. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. So any other questions we wanna invite you um, to um, put any questions or even just um, speak them out. And also we put in the survey uh, into the chat, our short surveys, just three, three, four questions. And um, that you can complete for us and give us <laughs> on this information. Get back what are you laughing work. at, Sue? Oh, Alejandro has to get back to work. <laughs> he, he's, he's got that fake background behind him that looks like the skater wants some attention. I know how uh, difficult it is for our field staff to get away from anything. I mean, it's putting out emergencies all the time. Yeah, I have to back to work. So. Anyway, guys, thank you so much uh, for the info. Well, good luck, good luck everybody, guys. What you do on your next exam. All right, thank you so much. All right, yes. Uh, I myself, I have a D5, which I'm very proud of and was really hard for me to get with all those, you know, field questions. And then I have a T2 and I didn't have the right work experience in the treatment plant to convince the health department to give me that T3. That's really the hard uh, experience uh, place to, to get. And we have three T2s right now in our treatment plant that are working on getting the experience required to be able to get their T3s. It takes a long time, it takes two years. Great. Well, thanks Sue, this is a wonderful presentation. We're about to wrap up, but before okay. we do, I want to give you a chance just to say some parting words, um, maybe some give some advice or some encouragement or whatever to our attendees before we, we close. You would be amazed uh, if you start now, and especially at this rate, not having to wait six months and six months and six months, you could get pretty quickly certified. And uh, we have our meter reader that is our chief distribution operator now. Uh, I have seen our janitor go to a superintendent 
you know, if you're young and starting out your career, one step at a time, just focus on it. And I found for myself, if I kept taking the next exam and didn't let too much time go by, then the answers were fresh in my mind because there's only so many questions they can ask you. And let me tell you, when it got into chemistry and regulations, which are really the higher uh, certifications have more of those questions, then I started smiling a lot because those are my favorite subjects. I love regulations. So everything that you listen to, all the training that you guys do, you never know. I keep thinking that could answer a question. This is yeah. a question. And looking at as many exams as possible. I looked at five different hundred question exams before I took the D5 and each one of them helped me get a really good grade at the end. There are a lot yes. of practice exams available out there. Somebody asked, where can you find them? Well, AWWA has a lot. Uh, I'll send you a list of uh, resources for getting exams and uh, a lot of these home study books uh, out of the Office of Water Programs, the last chapter has an exam. And uh, I think that you can ask your friends. I know all our guys have their favorite exam for when they went to an exam review class. There are many times that we sent people when they were in-person classes at pretty good expense to the district for three days. I've taken a lot of them myself two days where one is math and focus on math questions and the other one is all the other types of questions that you might get. Okay, well, wonderful. Well, Sue, thank you once again. Um, you. for You're welcome. Providing this information and sharing your, your vast experience with us today. Um, again, we wanna invite the attendees to complete our survey. It's a short survey, won't take you long at all to complete. Also, you will be receiving it through email as well. And we wanna invite you also to attend um, our three sessions of our training buffet that's taking place tomorrow. And so we look forward to seeing you once again and being a consummate professional like the rest of us. We, we want to say to you, have a great rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you again. Good luck, everybody.